Hello everybody, I'm Alejandro Piñero Iglesias. I work for Igalia and I'm going to present uh, the update for the book and driver for the Raspberry Pi. That is, you know, this device. So I'm, to, I'm going to talk about the book and driver. Uh, the thing is that uh, last year on, on Fortin, I also made a presentation about the driver. At that point, it was a new thing. So what I'm going to do in this presentation is starting with a recap, a summary of that last year's presentation. Then I'm going to move to the current status, to the, what we were doing during the last year, focusing first on the performance and how we um, uh, came to uh, get the driver uh, one to one uh, conformance. So, a summary of the last, the last year presentation. Um, on August uh, 2020, uh, we got a minimal, minimal Vulkan 1.0 feature set. That means that we were able to complete all the features needed for the to be Vulkan 1.0 conformant. Then, uh, slightly after that, we moved the development to Mesh Upstream. Uh, until then, we were working on a, on a custom branch, on a personal branch. And then, uh, after some bug fishing, uh, we uh, sent uh, the, the driver to, to Kronos and we got uh, the driver to, to get the 1.0 uh, conformance, uh, conformance. Then, after that, uh, so we, we can say that at that point, um, the driver was the 1.0 feature set complete with the mandatory extensions. So then we started to, uh, to move to, to test real work applications and then <clears throat> uh, we moved to, to test the, the driver with x64 bit. That at that point, uh, our, our initial idea was to test both, but I think that right now the default, at least for us, for the core developers of the driver, uh, we, we test mostly on 64 bit um, uh, um, scenarios. So the current status. Uh, since then, uh, we, in, in addition to uh, merge uh, it upstream, we also uh, uh, got it um, connected to the upstream that, uh, GLAB CI iteration. That means that right now, every time that you, well, that you or we um, create a merge request to, for a, a new stuff on, on the driver, uh, it will pass through a, um, a set of, of tests. So if you want to integrate a new change, uh, it needs to pass all, the, all those tests. It's not a full uh, Chrono CTS uh, test suite because that will require a lot of hours. So it's a subset allowed around 10 minutes. Uh, and then we also in, uh, improved the, the, um, the windowing system platform support for one and for display. And as mentioned on, on the um, on uh, before we work a lot on, on getting um, performance improvements and to and we were able to move from one to zero to be one one dot one conformant uh, we also improved the the support or we get uh, the driver working with uh, some debug uh, applications the most famous one is render doc the render doc is basically the the default uh, Vulkan uh, debug application uh, at first, it was not working, so we need to, this, to do some back fishing on our driver to get it working. And same then it became a really, really useful tool. Uh, another tool that we also need to do some back fishing and to get it working was a GFX record truth. Uh, this tool is basically uh, it allows you to record um, uh, your book and comments, and then it allows you to reply them. Uh, this was really uh, helpful for our performance work because um, what we usually do is uh, work on a specific thing and then we need to test it if it really works or not. So what we do is replay a specific uh, trace of a given application instead of running manually the, the application. Um, we also got it working with several um, Unreal, Unreal Engine for uh, demos uh, that was also uh, useful for when we were working on the performance work. Um, so, talking about the performance work, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the main focus, I mean, um, on the on the on the last year for them, I mentioned that we were working, uh, we were doing our initial performance work. And we use uh, mostly the original trilogy for 
uh, quake because there is a lot, there are a lot of some ports uh, for Vulkan. So this year, sorry, <laughs> last year and, to, and on 2021, uh, we started to use uh, Unreal Engine for samples. Uh, these ones uh, compared with the Quake uh, and Doom 3 um, demo, uh, games are generally GPU li limited. I mean, they use a lot. Of, they use more the GPU, and they use a really expensive shaders. So, uh, as the most expensive one was the shading, we focus on the baking on the compilation of, on the compiler of the driver. The advantage of that is that the improvements that we were doing on the Vulkan for Vulkan. Uh, was also uh, helping the OpenGL driver because uh, for this platform, for um, for the Broadcom support, uh, there are some common paths and specifically the compiler is common for the Vulkan and OpenGL driver. OpenGL, OpenGL, yes. So what was the process of that performance work? What we were doing was basically uh, running up um, going up the samples and we captured the, the, the shader. And visually, uh, reading the, 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 the output, we were trying to identify uh, places that seemed not optimal and figure out how that part could be uh, were generated. Uh, we started to think on how to uh, implement uh, and design optimizations. And then at the end, after we implemented those, uh, we usually used um, three, uh, well, three tools. One was Shaded TV. Shaded TV is, um, is a tool what uh, it does is compare, um, it allows you to, com to compare a shader, it outputs the, um, the compiled code, and it shows statistics about that, about how many uniforms they use, how many registers, how many instructions. So you can do a before and after and compare if you are getting more instructions or more registers, etc. Uh, the other tool was, as mentioned, GFSS Reconstruct. What we do is uh, running with or without uh, this, uh, in theory, optimization and compare the, the VFPS. And we are also doing some manual testing, just putting on the game and or in the demo and running and checking if something, if everything was working. Because sometimes we were getting some uh, visual artifacts, uh, so uh, that we need to fix too. So uh, about the specific thing that we did to, uh, to improve the performance, as I mentioned before, um, basic, uh, based on, on the compiler backend, uh, one of the things that um, we realize is that from these shaders, as I mentioned for uh, mostly coming from the uh, Unreal Engine 4 uh, demos, uh, is that they had a lot of uh, memory access. It comes from UBOs, SSBOs, uh, textures. Um, the thing is that um, uh, in this hardware, the unit that ha handled all this is called the TMU, is the texture and memory unit. Um, the thing is that one of the, uh, there is a, every time that we have this access, there is a latency on, on those. So the mechanism that it has this GPU is having a, three, a thread switch. So it, you are working on a thread and then uh, you ask for for some thing, and then you move, you you do a thread switch and keep working uh, as a kind of hiding the latency. The thing is that, as I mentioned, there is a lot of uh, access. So one of the things that we we try to do is instead of uh, access and using access and using is trying to pipeline better these uh, access operations. Uh, getting in a row and then doing the three switch. The thing is that uh, we thought that we would get a really big um, improvement for that, and that was not so big. But we got a, a, a better uh, outcome from the uh, from the next uh, improvement. That was that the thing is that we realized that a lot of uh, these access uh, to the to the memory were in fact uniform. Uh, uh, um, all the time, so we, we, we so we were able to replace uh, those um, access to the TMU uh, for for providing a, a uniform. And additionally, uh, the thing is that usually when you uh, do access, usually you, you don't do just one access to just one element. That you usually do a sequential access. So this allows it to to improve this. Um, and I think. 
the, yes, this was the, probably the, the, the thing that improved more the performance. In some cases, on some shaders, uh, it improved the performance like 30, 40 percent. Uh, the other thing that we're working on was on, on the on the code scheduling. The thing is that um, this uh, GPU allows you to uh, to execute several instructions on, on the same cycle. And the thing is that uh, it allows you to do that, but with some restrictions. Uh, until we started to work on this, uh, the driver was really conservative on, on this, on which instructions and how those instructions were executed at the same time, or merging instructions. So we refined that a lot, and it uh, helped to, to improve a lot uh, the instructions count from, from the series compiled. That, as I mentioned, from these samples, they were really complex, uh, really complex shaders, so the instruction count was really high. And the other thing that we worked on was on improving the pipeline of the variants. The thing is that um, the variants are the, the, the data that comes from, from one set, uh, set stage from the other, like, for example, uh, from the vectors and the fragment. And the thing is that you usually need to do some, some interpolation and, and it requires some instructions. So we were able to, to improve also the pipeline here and, and improve how the, the code, the code generate. So uh, the thing is that um, one thing that I just didn't mention before for, about the CDDB tool is that the CDDB tool uh, is based on having a, a database of shaders coming from several applications. So the idea is this tool uh, has this set of, of shaders and it uh, runs the, the drivers, the compiler, uses the, the 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 compile the drive sorry to compile those shaders and compile uh, before and after. So in this table we can see um, the change from is this is not for one specific improvement. This is from the before and after. So run, running uh, from all those shaders that are thousands of them, uh, we got an improvement on the threads uh, and. A significant improvement on distortion count. In this case, lesses are better. And also in uniforms, again, less are, is better. And on spill fields, spill fields, uh, um, this is a mechanism uh, that is used for because on GPUs, usually the number of the registers are limited. So when you are out of registers, what you do is uh, move the data to a <coughs> to a small buffer, and then you get back. So you as spill is Spill and fill is, is just getting to the memory and getting back from, from, from the memory. And also, uh, on, from all, on the specific applications, uh, in this case, it's an improving performance on frame rate, on frames per second. And as you can see, uh, the one that got more improved, improved was the Unreal Engine on high um, uh, high resolution because in that case is also uh, is high no not sorry not high resolution high detail because in that case it uses some more detailed uh, shaders uh, and as you can see in, in some cases we got a 60 percent improvement and uh, we got a, the smaller one was on on the quick port for uh, for Vulcan because it's a more a part more simple game um, and um, and as on uh, as I mentioned before, uh, one of the things that uh, change when on these optimizations are the how the registers are, are allocated. Uh, one thing that uh, the thing is that uh, as I mentioned before, the number of registers on GPUs are usually uh, limited. So there is a concept that is register pressure. That means how how are you using um, all the registers that you have available? Because the thing is that, as you mentioned, if you go beyond the limit of registers, you need to rely on spill and fills, and this is something that you want to avoid. Uh, because in general, uh, needing to use spill and fills is far uh, lower, slower than using the register. So in the end. Um, all these performance improvements uh, require uh, more changes on uh, um, require different strategies about how when to use one or the other, and in some cases uh, it was worse. 
So in the end, in several uh, in, in, in several cases, when we got um, a spill and fill, we tried to recompile uh, this idea some of these options. Uh, the heuristic that you use is really basic. That is basically that if we get an, a spill fill, we just try a, a different uh, um, a strategy. But the thing is that we could be another. The thing is that we could also trying to you know uh, di try different strategies and see which one provides a better outcome in theor theoretical outcome but the problem of that is that will make the compa the compilation really slow so we only recompile on when we think this as uh, something that we need to to avoid at all costs uh, the other thing that we ch uh, found is that um, in some uh, in some cases um, uh, you have the, this demo with the Unreal Engine, and it started to stutter. Uh, big, and this is this was happening because uh, the engine was compiling on runtime. Uh, the thing is that in theory, in Vulkan, uh, you should try to compile and to get, to have everything available before uh, started the runtime. But in practice, uh, several games uh, still rise on that. So, for example, in the Unreal Engine case. Uh, one case that you get this thing is, for example, when you, uh, in this typical uh, uh, shooting game, you were with, with your machine gun, and then suddenly you shoot, and in that moment it started to compile shaders because you need, uh, you need a, uh, the game needs a new effort, and things started to go uh, to go slower. Uh, so we, we we try to mitigate that is implement at this uh, a cache on disk. So basically, uh, if you run the same application or game several times, the first time it compiles and get the outcome to outcome to the disk. So the next time, it will check if it is available on disk and get the outcome without going to, through all the 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 process to compile the shaders. That can be somewhat slow. Uh, for now, this cache is only on Vulkan uh, because it's, we found the cost was more important. Um, we also found the the things um, the compiler internally. They have several uh, intermediate languages. Uh, near uh, is the um, when you the thing is that when you came a uh, shader came from from Vulkan, yeah, the, the um, it is writing on Spear B and is and then it's um, translated to near. That is the main intermediate language on on Mesa. It's basically the intermediate language that is used on most the drivers that Mesa uh, handles. And this has some scheduling for destructions, but it's somewhat limited. So it is probably uh, that we is likely that we will need to evaluate in the future to improve the, the scheduler for beer. Beer is an intermediate language, but it's really specific for the Broadcom, for this specific GPU. Um, but the thing is that sometimes better uh, beer doesn't always lead to better GPU. So in the end, probably there is room improvement even below uh, that is on the register allocation and the GPU scheduling. Uh, the thing is that uh, when you got, uh, after all the, uh, after you compile all the shaders, at the end you get some, the, the final, not the final, you, you have uh, the instructions and then you need to assign the register, the register for distributions, and this process could be improved. And as I mentioned before, uh, the compiler strategies are not always optimal. Uh, the thing is that there are several strategies, and in some cases, on some shaders, one is better than, than the other. And we don't have a heuristic for this that. As I mentioned, the third, we only recompile if there is something that we consider that is we need to avoid, that is basically spilling and killing. So the path to one dot what conformance. The thing is that as I mentioned before, uh, the last year, uh, the last year presentation, I mentioned that we got the one dot zero percent uh, conformance uh, on Kronos. Just in case, uh, Kronos is the entity that controls uh, the, spe the specification of of um, of Vulkan, OpenGL, and other standards. And in order to so your, if you want your driver to be considered uh, that is conformant to a given um, a version, you need to send a submission to, to Kronos. So this, this year, we, 
we got uh, the driver to be one to one conformant. And on last year presentation, we didn't have a clear plan for that. We mentioned that as a maybe, because um, what we started to do, uh, our main focus uh, was expanding uh, our feature set for the driver, uh, going coming from the very basic, uh, uh, feature, basic no, the mandatory feature set to the optional extensions that were more common and more used. The thing is that as we were progressing, we were progressing uh, far, fast, uh, far faster than we thought. Uh, this was one of the reasons of that is because there is a lot of work on, on, on MESA to, uh, to generalize the work, uh, to, sorry, to generalize the code. So for example, um, when we started the driver, we used a lot of common things from other drivers. Uh, and lately, um, uh, uh, last year, I think that they started to do last year, a lot of uh, developers were started to put the common parts on a common place. So instead of copy and paste and adapt, you were using just that. So several of that extensions, we need to just use the common code for that. And in this slide, we can see all the uh, extensions we, we, we exposed last year. That if we made the count, I think that one, two, three, four, a lot of a lot of states, let's say. Um, as I mentioned, uh, a lot of them require little work thanks to the common implementation. Probably the more tricky was uh, the multi-view extension. This multi-view is is um, used a lot of in in VR work. Um, you know, so you have one rendering and other rendering that is really, really similar, but with, you know, just some perspective change. Uh, it was tricky because it needed, in order to implement that, it uh, requires uh, implementing internally a, a pass-through uh, using geometry shaders with uh, with uh, larger rendering. That, I mean, is uh, tricky in the sense that needed more changes than the other extensions. But not, it didn't require. So um, probably the compiler work was more complex because it needed to to go really low on the um, uh, distributions, scheduling, pipelining. Um, but this, in relation with the extensions, required more, more work because it needed to to implement this internal geometry shader. So the future plans, um, as we did last year, the idea is. Taking a look to the extensions that we don't support, uh, taking a look to the extensions that uh, are more demanded by the by the, by the users. Uh, for example, uh, um, there are some extensions that we are working right now, right now these days, that is about uh, storing and, and loading uh, eight bit and sixteen bit uh, SSBOs. That was uh, suggested, requested on one issue. Um, probably it's possible that we start to experiment with floating point on uh, using 16 a bit uh, again trying to to get its own performance improvements uh, as we work a lot on performance work there are still uh, room for improvement for that so, pro so it's possible that we, we keep working on, on performance uh, we are doing also start to do and probably will continue to work some improvements on the kernel interface. Uh, the thing is that uh, we were using the same kernel interface that we were using for the OpenGL driver, and so far that was okay uh, or fine, fine or good enough. But there are uh, specific pieces that we could improve, so like for example on multi-sync. Uh, the thing is that uh, Vulkan uh, defines uh, more uh, in detail and, and uh, more in detail, no, more more ways to synchronize the rendering. Uh, so uh, to implement all the features, or uh, it would be good to to expand the kind of interface. And uh, maybe this is again, and maybe I thought this is more complex. Maybe start to work on Vulkan one uh, one dot two. Uh, but again, I think that it will depend on how fa how fast and how many new extensions we we we, we implement during this, this year. So uh, and this is the end. Uh, so thanks for for listening to me.
Um, if you want to contact us, we are usually on the IRC, on, on a specific channel from OFTC, on video core. Uh, we also answer questions on the mailing list. Uh, if anyone wants to pro, uh, submit an issue or create a mail request, uh, as I mentioned, the upstream development for the driver is on GitLab. And we also provide um, news, write news and updates about the development of, of the driver on our personal blog posts. Uh, my, um, the main developers from Yago um, Toral and myself. Um, so we, you can read our, our, our blogs to get some news. Um, we are hiding, legally hiding, so if anyone is interested, you can send a, a, a CV to, to this, to, 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 our, to our company. Um, if you have a question. Okay, should be live soon. So um, it's okay if I talk. Uh, let's just wait to make sure that the stream has caught up. And yes, it looks like we're live. Uh, okay, yeah. so hello, Alejandro. Uh, hello, thank you everyone. for the talk. Like, and thanks for your work on V3 DV. It's really impressive. And oh. since your talk was recorded uh, about a week ago, uh, do you have any updates? Because you've mentioned a lot of future plans. Yeah, in fact, uh, it's easy to mention updates because my last slide was the future. So some of the dates, for example, is on the on the current interface. Uh, we landed the the changes on on the driver to use a, a multi sync. Uh, probably this will take more time to get to the users because in this case uh, it needs changes on the kernel. Uh, so we, we are we were also working on on, on those patches. Uh, and as I mentioned before, I mean, uh, so far um, when we started the driver, uh, to keep things simple, we were trying to just first focus on the driver uh, without uh, touching the the, the 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 kernel, because when you need that, that things, you have two pieces to to modify. So now that we got uh, the driver 1.1, uh, we moved to that, and this landed uh, last week. And the other thing is that uh, about performance, um, about the 16-bit, uh, we also landed some extensions for that. And in fact, we were talking with, uh, in this case, um, there is some people that is working on emulator for uh, the Nintendo 64 and other other uh, other kind of um, uh, video console. Uh, Emulators, so they are requesting some application. Sorry, so they are requesting some extensions that they need for this their uh, Vulkan render. And uh, so we landed uh, the system bit. Uh, we are going to pro to start to work on on the station for the host pointer. Uh, we were also helping them because they were having some issues with um, performance. Uh, so they were taking the shade and ask some help. So one of the things that I mentioned on the on the presentation is that for the, um, the register pressure, we have some um, several strategies. And the only heuristic to decide which one to use is the one that, OK, we, we, we did one, we have a spinner fields. Let's try the next one. And th this very same week, uh, Yago Toral, that, that is, is also working on the driver, um, started to play with the, uh, the idea of using all the strategies and and taking the the one that is better the only doubt that we have here is that uh, if we if doing that always because the thing is that if you try all the strategies obviously that will take more time compiling or uh, at least at first uh, use some um, uh, environment viable to to choose from that um and i think yes i think that's the uh, Recently, the last, uh, and in my case, I have been working on about fishing because um, you know the CTS, the CTS uh, test suite is 
constantly adding more 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 tests and we found that on the last update we have some tests that were failing so we are fixing that so since i recorded the presentation i think that as they, they are they those are the main updates um yeah thanks for providing the update and congrats on landing 1.1 support so that's nice uh and another question uh, so you've uh, mentioned that you've got over 60 percent performance for the high quality on real engine for demo uh with all your shader optimizations which is impressive what framework and resolutions are we talking about okay the thing is that um the the, the demo that we used more was the shooting one uh but this was we need to take into account that it's just a demo so probably they didn't made a lot of work on performance because the thing is that also you made a lot of work on, on the driver obviously then on the application you need to do something so in that case i think that we were working mostly on uh, not uh, not 1080 point but uh, seven uh, 720 and we got like 15 frames per second and we, we use the low quality i think that is slightly better 20 something but so it was not really playable but i think that is what i mentioned before it was just a demo it was not a real game so i think that was okay it was not <laughs> a perfect but it was okay and for example the other games that we use uh, for for the reference that were the ports for for the quake one two and three they were perfectly playable with the Raspberry 4. Um, and in that case, we could improve, uh, increase the resolution. Okay, thank you for your answer. Another question from Ancurio. Isn't the onus uh, for implementing proper shader compilation timing slash caching on the app? I'm a bit <laughs> saddened that the drivers have to yet again do the heavy lifting here. Uh, yes, in fact, this is the theory and in fact uh, one of the, thing, the things that i mentioned on, on the presentation about the caching about doing ourselves for caching was like let's i mean our plan was doing that like, like the last because as you said uh, that's the um, uh, the application should that because the thing is that we already provided the support for the uh, book and pipeline caches that book and pipeline cache is the way that applications could you know, uh, run a game, uh, catch the cast, and they do, uh, they do what they uh, want. So in the end, the need we needed, well, we needed. We decided to go for the on disk cast because we found that uh, not all the applications were doing that. The thing is, some applications were doing that fine, like on the loading screen, doing all these kind of things. So then on game, you are not doing compile on, on runtime but we also finding that some other applications were not doing that so and i think that i put that example of the presentation about this shooting demo and what's really clear you were going with your gun and then on your first shot every, everything <laughs> was freezing like because it started to compile a lot of shaders that's what happened on the uh, there was a, also a demo uh, that was um, a driving uh, so you were you, with your car and you were doing like um, on the first curve. Uh, I don't know, I don't remember exactly, but I think that was something like an effect with the light and, and the sun and it started to go slower because it had to, to, to compile shaders. And, and this question is, is something that uh, is common for the drivers and common for, I mean, a lot, there's a lot of debate on, on the developers and we shouldn't do, the, that, do this, but at the end on practice, we are doing that because, I mean, uh, it's what happens. And it's what it... The thing is that I understand that handling all the uh, combinations are hard, but well, in the end, it was not a lot of work. So it's not like we are doing a lot of heavy lifting because as I said before, we need to provide support for caching. I mean, there is an a API on Vulkan where you, where you ask the driver to uh, to get a cache so the applications can do whatever they want with the caching. So it was just uh, doing that and just, and also MES already has support for on this cache. So we, 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 are, we just reason what MES already has. So I mean, well, we're not a lot of work and it's not exactly heavy lifting. It's just um, additional support for the for the applications. But uh, I think I made a post about that. The thing is that also the driver do that, applications in general shouldn't rely on that. Uh, yeah, thank you for your answer. And this is this is the thing the games kind of expect that from the drivers. So what else can we do, right? Uh, 
Another question is uh, from Luke, and it's kind of two parts. So what kind of hardware documentation do you have? And uh, was there any reverse engineering needed to do your work? Uh, no, we don't need to, we didn't need to write to reverse engineering because the thing is that um, EGALI and the, reverse, and the Raspberry Foundation have um, an agreement. So we have, ac so we have access to the, um, to the hardware documentation. Uh, this is not, this is, so not everybody has access to the hardware uh, uh, documentation. The thing is that uh, thanks for doing that, uh, we have a lot of um, uh, definitions of all the packets on all the, uh, the packets, I mean, that when you create uh, a rendering, uh, when you uh, write the submission to the to the kernel, you need to write packets like uh, to define what we are doing. So we have all those probably really well documented and available on, on the driver. So the thing is that also only some people have access to the hardware documentation. Every, a lot of people, uh, people can still uh, contribute to the driver using what is already uh, documented on the driver and also taking from, from the OpenGL driver. In fact, uh, from the list that I shared before about all the state sessions that we were working uh, this year, uh, some, of, some of them, most of them were from the core team, if you, can, if you want to call that. Uh, but there are also some, some stations that were provided for the community uh, that they don't have access to the hardware documentation, but they have they have access to all the, the things that are written down on the driver that are defined. The thing is that all the packets, all those packets has, it's not, I mean, the thing is that um, because we have some people on, on, on Igalia working on, on, on Turnit that needs a lot of reserve engineering and, well, a lot. For example, some of the, of the work of the, uh, the reverse engineering is, okay, we I have with packet and I have this bit, what this bit means, so I'm going to try what means this bit. And in work case, it's not the case. I mean, we have in, on, in some XML, we have all the packets with the fields and with a name that is well explains what uh, that field uh, does. So, so uh, I think that's, that's all for the answer of this question. Uh, another question for uh, from Enu Nens. Uh, are there any op other optimizations from this work in other parts of the driver other than the compiler? Um, other than the compiler, if we have, if we made more, okay, so the question is, if we're working on performance that were not exactly on the, on the compiler, that were in other places? I don't know if you understand the question. Uh, yes, I think, like, is there any work on optimizing other parts of the driver than the compiler? Uh, yes, yes. For example, um, when I mentioned before, the cache was specific for the Vulkan driver. In fact, right now, uh, on this cache, we only we only have on this cache for the Vulkan driver, not for the OpenGL, because basically we we didn't see the <laughs> we didn't see the need. Will we should be easy, but was not a priority. Uh, and the and we focus a lot on the compiler because it's where we put a lot more work. But what? But yes, we also made some work on on specifically on the Vulkan driver, like uh, for example, um, I remember that uh, Yago were working on and I, I before with the usual work for was putting a game, saying uh, on the logs what was doing, and for example, I I remember that Yago workers uh, on avoiding. Um, extra updates like okay for example this uh, um, this extra update of a given status is redundant because we already did that so we don't need that so yes we made some work specifically on the Vulkan driver uh, that is not the compiler but the presentation focus focus on the compiler because we use more time on that it was more tricky uh, thanks for the answer. And another question from Anunes. Uh, do you have any data on how much the optimizations work focusing on games may affect other usages, uh, such as desktop usage? Um, well, the thing is that uh, desktop uses, um, uh, right now, most of the desktop users is not using Vulkan. <laughs> Uh, is still using OpenGL. So yes, there will be, yeah, well, in fact, it would be happy and interesting to see how this, how much this compiled work will have helped the, the OpenGL because I say the compiler is common. But the thing is that um, 
uh, obviously the needs for the games and the needs for the desktop applications are different so probably not um not so much in fact uh, the, we have some people working on i mean we are um Diago, i mentioned Jago. Jago myself are focused on, on vulcan we have other people focus more on open gl on the desktop and they are there are some people working on improving the desktop uh the performance of, of the desktop and they are working more on the open gl and a, a lot on all this related with glamour with x with x server with x server and glamour and all the layers so the thing is that uh, as for perhaps there is some improvement on the performance thanks for this compiler work the the place the, where they will be get more 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 improvement for the desktop is in other place it's in all the ratio of all these pieces uh thanks and small correction so the question about reverse engineering was actually from martin not from luke luke was only the messenger uh yes. so uh, another question from pedro uh what type of task would be best for someone considering helping out on the development so i guess this is a question from point of view someone who just wants to start uh well if it's just to start i mean uh, i mentioned before that we uh, recently we were working on performance and we were working on, on performance basis on what some users were asking to us so i think that one of the things that we, that we need is more testing uh, uh so for example we appreciate uh, uh, that uh, in fact when we were at the beginning of the year when we were saying thinking about uh, what has to prioritize uh, one of the things that you mentioned is that uh one of the advantages of working on on those extensions on the extensions that needed those simulators were that there were some people behind that will test them so for example one thing to help here will be to to i, I don't know to, to find a, a vulcan application that you are interested to getting it working and improve the the the, 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 the performance and and tested it trying a little and i mentioned creating an issue saying okay i see some problems here and here. The other thing is that if you have enough, this is for someone that only that um, that have the experience enough to build an application and test with the Vulkan driver. If you have more experience and experience with the driver, with drivers and experience developing uh, on the code, we have uh, we are because in other drivers you have um a flags on saying xx or fix me we are really consistent on that we have fix mix and the fix me is not is not okay this is crap it's failing but it's more fix me like fix me this could be uh, done in some other place or in some other way or fix me we think that if we do that in other ways we could get more performance or fix me if we plan to work on such extensions then we need to modify well, how things we do here so if you have um, enough experience to work on, on the driver one thing that you can do is just get in the the code grab for fix me and see okay this seems uh, uh, simple enough to to work on that um the other thing is that um that, uh, and you can also ping us on, on the rc and ask uh, on what specifically you, you can work because i'm talking about generally about and about experience but Probably on IC, we can ask, okay, you have spent building uh, application, you have spent doing what? So we can provide a, a custom a recommendation. Uh, thanks for your answer. And there seems to be last question, uh, which is kind of like not very related to the spirit of Fosden, but what are the minimum specs for humans to be considered at Galia? Excuse me, could you, could you repeat the question? What are the minimum specs for humans to be considered at Igalia? <laughs> well, uh, and I mean, uh, right now, I mean, for some, specifically for the graphics uh, uh, group, that yes, we are looking for people with that had already experience with the with the driver. So, the minimum specs, the minimum specs will be having some experience. I mean, knowing what Vulkan is, knowing what OpenGL is, and, and, and already having working on. on on, on Vulkan. Something that we are looking a lot lately is people with experience on the DRM um, on the on the kernel I'm sorry on the kernel with the DRMS um, graphics. So you have experience with that, but that's tricky because for example myself I don't have a lot of experience on, on the kernel on the DRM. 
So the minimum, the minimum at least is that you have, you need to know what Vulkan is, what OpenGL is, and having some kind of uh, experience working on, on any driver on any uh, applications. So I know this, that's at least the minimum specs, but but I but okay. In any okay. case, uh, on, on on the web page we have uh, we are hiding and we are hiding and we have um, a specific uh, the profile that we are looking for. So. Uh, you could uh, you can take a look there okay so that was the last question do you have anything else to add uh i think no no i'll just that thank you for for accepting my my talk thank you for all these questions and um and, and, and thank you for the uh, moderator and the on the organizer of the of the room because i mean all this <laughs> teleconference <laughs> I, I i bet that it's tricky <laughs> Uh, yeah, we are having a blast here, and thank you again for your talk and your involvement with the community and V3DV. Uh, it's really impressive, and I hope to see you and all the participants uh, next year in person. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Thank you.